streaming. No fancy intro today. Chuck is out and about doing his thing. So there you go. Moved my desk around a little bit. To see if the lighting wouldn't be a little better. Tim, are we are we live? Do we have sound and video? I will assume that we do. Doo -doo -doo. Sitting here listening to the Thompson twins of all people. Of all groups, of all bands. I have no idea why. Popped up on my feed, I guess. Tim, how are we looking? Dead air. <laughs> I assume. There we go. All right. <laughs> Tim, can you hear and see me? <sighs> I will assume that you can. I guess I can check my mic. How does that work? There's my mic. It's working. How's it going, Commander Pete? Hey, Kador, how's it going? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody. I forgot. Uh, am I frozen? Okay, Commander can hear me. Let me tell you, our internet's been bumpy as all heck lately. Modem keeps going out, but they won't, uh, <laughs> they won't give us a new modem. How's it going, Stylin' It 38? Stylin', Stylin', Stylin' Up, Stylin' LP? I'm not sure, LP, is that a record? Um, all right, good enough, Tim, you're up, you're, you're out in the wilderness, so <laughs> no one can be surprised by that. So you did get the new thingamabob. We were hoping that would help. God knows. We've had so much weather in the state that uh, there's no telling what's going on. <sighs> this is three orcs. <laughs> How's it going, man? <laughs> and happy new year to everybody. You know, I so quickly forget. We don't really do New Year's as a celebration here at the house. So uh, my wife is usually a bed in bed by nine. We, I just don't even think about it. I'd completely forgotten it was the new year. It's, it's just a new, week, a, a new work week that I don't have any holidays looming in front of me. and <laughs> We can all get back to work. Uh, I guess that's my January celebration. Very cool. Uh, well, put a link up to them. Stylin, we need to, we need to spread the love, the CNC love all over the place. I have not been on anything in days i have not i mean it's probably been two two or three weeks that i have i hopped into facebook a little bit you know make a post get out um oh wait so <laughs> i guess you gotta ask am i not a moderator what the heck <laughs> thanks for the subscription retro gamer uh yeah i uh, uh we uh, we do the whole what was i talking about i'm so disjointed Something about a hop. Oh, I haven't been on social media hardly at all. And may I ask you to live a happy, carefree life? There you go. Uh, Gaxmore has arrived. Very good, M5. We've been rolling those things out like absolutely crazy. So I took a load of, I don't want to say it was Monday, not yesterday, Friday, and I noticed one of the bins that I had rolled up earlier in the week was still sitting there untouched. So, <laughs> so... Though they might be leaving our domicile and the troll dens, they might be gumming. I think it's cleared out now, but I think they were gumming up up there. The post office was absolutely slammed this year. I don't think they're. I don't think any level of damn it. I don't think any level of preparation uh, set them for what was coming. Uh, I read forty four percent, but um, somewhere my wife told me it was. Uh, online orders were up 50%. Uh, it's just a gigantic amount. Of, uh, our orders were up, sales were up throughout the, the whole season, and of course, Gaxmore landed and shipped, so we added our own level of chaos to the postal 
<laughs> to the post office. Thank you, Troll Lord Game. How's it going, Knight? We're settling in for the new year. Yeah, today I got on like a weird kick of 80s music and I think early 90s maybe. Six pence none the rich. Ri no, six pence none the richer. And the Thompson Twins, Pat Benatar. It was just some. It was it was a weird music day for me here in the Troll Dens. How's it going, Bloodwild? <sighs> very very odd day. Let me refresh that. See what's happening. Everything. My computer's moving slow. Everything's moving slow these days. Now, did you make any New Year's resolutions for the New Year? No, you know, I don't really do, we don't really do the New Year stuff, but I use the first of the year as kind of a resetting of things that, um, not so much maybe changes that I'm going to make in my own life, but things that I want to get focused on. Like I told Tim, I really want, uh, as soon as the holidays are over, I want, when we get back to work yesterday, that, um... You know, for myself, we get hyper focused on these projects. It are kind of some of them have kind of spun out just a little bit uh, of the horn horn god winter of the horn gods winter. That one kind of spun out, and the CKG has not gotten the attention that it absolutely needs. Uh, so I, I just I want to get hyper focused this year. There's so many things that I want to do with TLG, and so many things that we places we want to go with the company and the product line, castles and crusades in, in particular. Uh, that I want us to get hyper focused, and and something comes up in front of us, and we fix it and finish it, and immediately so that we can move on to the next project. So there's so many uh, half projects done. We had very tentatively planned a Kickstarter for January, but uh, after a long meeting yesterday, we all agreed it's best to kick it back, perhaps till May, uh, and just leave January as a regrouping period to kind of shore up, you know, holes in the in the boat and wrap up loose ends and all of that stuff. I really want to get CKG PHB and Starship Warden off my desk uh, and, and onto everybody else's desks. And they subscribe for him. <laughs> good Lord, that's very good. Thank you very much. But what about you, Grey Pape? Did you make any resolutions? Uh, I think one of the things I do, and I, but I'll do this frequently throughout the year, and, but the new year becomes part of it, and this might be the closest thing I come to having a, re a resolution is to just clean out more of the debris in my life uh, and to make things a little bit simpler. Like, for instance, uh, this month's task uh, is to get all of my utilities, the home, you know, not even TLG's utilities, but my home front utilities, the, the cable, the electric, the water, everything auto-drafted so I don't have to receive a bill and then pay the bill and all of that stuff. So... Just it's things like that, just to make my life a little bit easier. <laughs> I'm not certain. I, I I don't have to really give this some thought. My argue, my wife and I argue about this all the time. I'm not certain that the technological wave that we've experienced since the late '90s has made life easier. It probably has, but it might have made it a lot more aggravating. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm just not certain. Uh, but um, so, so that's one of the things that, that I'm trying to do is just is, is figure out how to make everything a little bit easier. My resolution was to try and clean up the house more, do all those annoying little projects. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. Make, just get things done. Make things run a little bit smoother. Uh, and a lot of the stuff, you know, you, get, you end up with just things that have no purpose, meaning, or sentimental value, and, and they're just laying there. So it's, and it's hard to get rid of them. I got in, you know, I talked last December about this big black trunk of mine. I got in there and broke it all apart. And there's a lot of stuff that it needs to go from my childhood, but I just hadn't gotten rid of it yet. I was great for up to January 2nd, and then it all fell apart. And went back to <laughs> yeah, that's the way you New Year's resolutions usually go. Uh, I, I had a really good day yesterday, and I've had a good day today, so I'm hoping that maybe I can carry it on into the third day of the week and the third work day of the month. Uh, yeah, just one of those things. Just go on Facebook and see how much better you get. Like this. <laughs> Not Facebook, big danger. That's that. That is one of the things. So here's here's an interesting thing, and I know some of you people are probably in the same kind of boat or close to it. So I've got three children, and uh, this is this was kind of an epiphany I had last week. 
uh, I've got three children, two of them now in college, and one's headed that direction, but they're all self-sufficient. So my wife and I have spent the last 20 odd years, you know, raising kids. That's been a huge part of our day from way back when and changing diapers, just making sure everybody has food, clothing, you know, getting into school, checking grades, all that crap that comes with it. Um, and don't get me wrong, I absolutely love having kids. I'd have had five if, <laughs> if my wife didn't cut me off, but she said, she said we could have five if I would carry them, but I couldn't figure out how to do that. So, but, um, but now that the kids are all self-sufficient, I've got a lot of time on my hands in the evening and I find because I'm not I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing so I'm just I've been reading a little bit more but I mostly work I mostly wander into the troll lord world and just work for two to three hours to the point that everyone calls me a workaholic I'll game some but uh, but mostly I work and I'm, I was thinking over the weekend I gotta figure out something else to do with this two to three hours other than just working you know 12 to 13 hours a day <laughs> I need to find something and I'm thinking the ham radio. I, I'm, I'm kind of full circle, kind of gone back to that. That was sarcasm, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it, but it wasn't big danger. That's the sad thing. I, I, I said, I don't go, I don't leave. When I go to Facebook, I try to stay on the Castles and Crusades group page, the discussion page, or my own page. I really, I try not to go out because it's, it's too many people arguing. <laughs> I don't want any of that. I'm spending more and more time dealing with my email. I need to cancel a lot of subscriptions. I don't care anymore. But yeah, that's, you know, yesterday I started. I don't know if this, and some of you guys are much better uh, with the computers than I am, but I've started mass blocking a lot of spam. I'm getting a huge amount of spam. It seems to come in waves. It seems to come a wave of spam and then a wave of telemarketers calling my phone. And then a wave of spam, a spam and then a wave of telemarketers. But I'm blocking as much as humanly possible unsubscribing where I can. I don't even know. I'm on so many political lists. Uh, it's crazy, and I don't, which is odd. I I read the news a lot, and I guess that's where I'm getting it, because I don't sign up for anything. To my knowledge, I've signed up for two newsletters since the internet was invented. <laughs> I may have signed up for three, uh, but uh, I want to I say I was on Joe Goodman's email list for a little while, but uh, it's, it's Biblio, uh, Biblio.com and then uh, the Franklin Press. Those are the only that I know of. Now, there may be a couple others, but there's not very many. But I get so much freaking political email um, that it drives me absolutely batshit crazy, and I'm trying to block it off, but I don't think it's... <laughs> there you go. The secret is just to stop reading emails. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I'm pretty good at that. I cut the patron's fee in half. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I don't know. It's funny. I'm just. It, it, there's got to be. There's got to be something. Some aspect of this modern world is. There's obviously some aspect that's really cool and it makes things easier. But I got to figure out how to make it less aggravating to use the tools appropriately. Perhaps that my wife's real good at that. She 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 does all the techno stuff and uh, keeps herself up to date and everything goes smoothly for her. But well, it mostly goes smoothly for her. It does not go smoothly for me. And speaking of all of that madness, uh, so one of the things that we, we've got, I've got some very decided things that I want TLG to achieve this year. And Tim hit our first milestone today, which is, of course, our mobile texting uh, is up and running. You can, uh, I think it should, I'll have to get the number, it's somewhere around, it's on our webpage. Um, but you can sign up for our mobile texting, Dumaflachi. Uh, I don't know what all that's called, blah, blah, blah. There's the number. Let's see, put TLG in that number. And I think you, you text TLG to that number and that will sign you up on our, our mobile texting so you can get you know information on, the, on your phone as opposed to via the email. And speaking of moving away from email. <laughs> yes, text TLG, yeah, yeah, so that's... So I just finished the first and only season of the new show, The Wilds, on Amazon. It's kind of like a Mean Girls, Lord of the Flies, Maze Runner mashup. It wasn't too bad. I'll have to check it out. We finished uh, Letter Kenny. My wife and I finished Letter Kenny season nine last night, and um, it was it was good. It was okay. It wasn't as good as the other seasons, but it was good. But we're we're looking for something new to watch. Um, someone's got me supposed to be watching something. 
Shit, now I can't remember what it was. So maybe we'll check out the wilds. We've tried all kinds of stuff, and there's so much stuff that we can't. We just we just don't enjoy. I don't. Neither of us generally enjoy characters who whine too much. Um, and a lot of a lot of TV shows. There's a lot of whining. Uh, Style. Let me let me get with Tim and see if he can't get it so you can post a link. Uh, blah blah. blah. Yeah, absolutely, Stalin. We, this is a, this is an ask me anything. So I forgot actually to say any of that. Uh, this is the ask me anything uh, and the games, uh, you know, Kickstarters that we're doing, the RPG, the industry, all of it. Any questions you have about any of this stuff, just give me a shout, and uh, I'll do do my best to answer it. Uh, do you know any efforts to make CNC table for Foundry VTT? Uh, yeah, we actually talked about that yesterday in, in our very long meeting that we had yesterday. Fantasy Grounds, Foundry, and Shard all came up. Uh, and I know that Chuck is talking to people, I'm not certain who, in the Foundry community to see if we can't get to, to migrate to that VTT as well as Fantasy Grounds and uh, Shard as well. Uh, these things are kind of new to me. Okay, they're trying to get you hooked up, Styler. Um, yeah, so these things are kind of new to me. So I mean, I, I know what VTT is, but um, how each of the applications work and each of the, the, the whatever it is, how it is put together. Tim and, and Chuck are heading that end up. End up. See, so just have him PM it to TLG channel. Uh, so, Stylin, Chuck says, just have him PM it to TLG channel. Good luck. <laughs> I only know it. I, I think PM is private message. <laughs> so, uh, so good luck with that. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're we're looking at all of them. We want to get whatever platform. I, I strongly suspect that these uh, VTT platforms are much like the social media platforms. People find that uh, you know that that software that they're most comfortable with or that application they're most comfortable with and that's what they stick with. So we're going to try to get everything everywhere. We're really, we're going to work hard on that. Chuck will be here soon, Style, and he'll help you out. Uh, there you go. That's right. We're all over Discord, so in the Discord link, you know, people can check it out there. I actually haven't been to Discord since New Year's. I think I jumped in and said Happy New Year's and that was about it. The question I'm sure you have... You, you must have covered this many times over the years, but I find, find I keep finding CKs and players that never bother reading ch chapter the Castle Keeper in the game, page 162 to 167 of the post So they end up running the game like any other AD&D game. To me, that is the most important chapter of the entire book. It, it's what makes this game so much more than other games. Do you have a comment about that? Yeah, that's got to be... I'm going to guess that that's the Tyranny of Rules section. Uh, let me pull out my player's hand. Um... Let's see if we're on the same page there. Uh, let's see. So where are you at? 160? Yeah, that's the tyranny of the rules. <laughs> uh, so actually, that's just how the, the game runs. The tyranny of rules is a few pages before that. Um, you know, I think that um, when, people, when people start playing Castles and Crusades, it's difficult for them to to break free of the game that they've played before, whether it's Dungeons and Dragons or whatever it is. Um, and they have a serious, there's a serious learning curve. As simple as the game is and as easy as the game is, there's a serious learning curve to step off and into this kind of do-it-yourself type of game mastering from the CK's perspective and from the players, but a lot from the, some, from the CK's. Now, I shouldn't even say that because it's, it's equally. I'm running a game for a bunch of guys now, younger guys, and they keep asking me, can they do this or can they do that or can they... And I, I told them last week, I said, listen, that's, that's not part of the game. You can, you can try anything you want. Just say, just say this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to cross the log that's floating on the river. Just say it. Uh, and I'm going to tell you to make a check. So... 
Uh, and and it's, a, it's a huge mental leap to go both, whether you're playing video games or other RPGs, into this, into this mechanic that is deceptively simple. I mean, it is crazy simple for anyone to learn and play, but where it gets complicated is where you actually apply the mechanic. It's not that complicated, obviously. Once you've played it for a year or so, or six months or two months or whatever it is, whatever your learning curve is, you've figured that out. you figured out how easy it is and how versatile the, the mechanic is and how you want it to apply to every damn thing that happens at the table. Um, and you just got to kind of bring your players with you, or if you're a player, you got to kind of bring your CK. Uh, and I think you're right. I think if, if people would take a little bit of time and kind of study through that section that breaks down the way the Siege Engine actually works and gives you a bunch of examples, then you'll be a little bit, a little bit, you know, on that road of discovery. But I, I got to tell you, and I'm, I'm as guilty as everybody else. It took me, I probably, we had released CNC in 2005, I think, and I didn't run my first actual game until 2006, about a year or so after the game had come out. Um, and I started running it, and it probably took me, 10 maybe 15 sessions to realize how for it to really sink in i mean obviously i was playing with davis and mac who created the siege engine so they were there and it wasn't that i wasn't using it but it, to really for it to sink in at you know a both a conscious and a subconscious level that this mechanic is insanely easy and crazy versatile that's really the key to it uh it can cover almost anything i don't have to really do I don't have to make up all that stuff before. And now I've got, I've got a mechanic that really covers any contingency that the players are going to throw at me. And that's the key because once the CK has the ability to do that, once the CK has, or the GM, once the GM has the ability to respond um, consistently and coherently to any kind of suggestion that comes at them from across the table, then that opens up the playing field in a huge way for players to start doing whatever they want and trying whatever crazy idea they they can come up with. Um, because now there's some way to resolve that. It's not just a, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. You know, it's, it's not this kind of bat down ideas. It's go. You've, you've got to go. Try. Uh, so I, I think that learning, I, I think no matter what, you're going to have a learning curve with people. The biggest comment I ever hear about it is, oh, I've been DMing for 30 years and don't need to read it, just common sense stuff. Yeah, that's the, that, and that right there, I'm the perfect example of that because I had been DMing for 30 years. Why? I don't, need to, I don't need to get all this stuff. But it took time. It really took time. And had I, probably had I dove into that section a little bit deeper, as you've suggested, then it would help out. It would have helped out, um, you know, just get past that learning curve. And now, now the CJ is just, I'm worried, 15 years on, of course, but it's second nature, and there's no, I don't know, it's just so crazy versatile, and it gives so much freedom to the CK, uh, and so much freedom to the players. I think we, we are always pushing this idea that the CKs have freedom now. The players do too, because with a mechanic that can resolve issues, uh, they can try anything, they can go anywhere, they can do anything, and that's kind of the key to it. There is a related problem with the chapter. There's actually further explanation the CK guide about the siege engine. Most people understand only that the CK guide is 100% optional, but in reality, that chapter in the CK guide is just further clarification. Yeah, there, there's there's sections of the CKG. What was I? We've used the magic section a huge amount, an absolutely huge amount. And though it is optional, it's really <laughs> it's crazy helpful. Uh, I'll minimally say that. There's parts of the Castle Keeper's Guide that I, I really push. People, people should get it. People should really just get the CKG. I don't like to do, I don't like to, you know, sing to whatever, but um, I guess that's my job. But I don't, I don't like to tell people what to do or how to run their games or what they need or what they don't need. You need the player's handbook, definitely, and probably the monster book. But really, the Castle Keeper's Guide is filled with so much information in there that you can apply minimally that you can kind of springboard off of that the book at my table has become completely indispensable and I can tell you I don't know if this is the copy um, I'm kind of glad that I, did, I can't remember I, I, this is the copy and I made notes I don't know where it is you know we're doing the th uh, fourth printing 
we're doing a third printing of the CKG very soon, and um, there's going to be a very small additions to it, clarifications, more information. Uh, how's it going, Art Mike Disney? Art of Mike Disney. Uh, that's very good. And CKG is one of those books. I mean, it's just one of those books that it's got so much material in it, and it's it's just. I don't know. It's a lot of material. It needs a better index, I think, um, and some of it needs it needs more illustrations, which we're working on. We've got some great illustrations going into the CKG uh, to help things out and more diagrams. Like for instance, um, what was it needed fixed? Like the the room cost of room room and board needs clarified. And then I really want I've, I've expanded this. Uh, Jason Walton drew pictures of each of the types of ships that are described in there, each of the types of wagons that are described in there. But now I want a diagram of a ship that's going to tell me... I did a sea, a sea adventure this past Sunday, and I couldn't aft and bow? Aft and bow? That's as far as I can get you. Starboard and port. But I want to know, you know, what's the mizzenmast? What's the main deck? What's the fore deck? What's the this? I want all of that information in a diagram. I don't even need description te descriptive text for it. I just need to know what it is so that when I'm running a game, I, I can describe what I'm doing. So I think we're going to add that. Uh, I, I think we're going to have a space issue in the CKG very, very soon, but I believe that's going to be added. But um, yeah, it's one of those. It's one of those books. It's. A, I, I think it's a must-have, and uh, I don't like to say that, but it is. When is the next stream? If you are game, going to happen, Steve? I'm anxious. Very soon. We talked about that yesterday. We're going to try to get one up in January. Really, we want to do one every two to three weeks. Uh, we're thinking of kind of mashing it with the GMTT. Yeah, that's the thing. Part of the issue is just time constraints on me. Um, I'm trying to figure out right now the biggest... So I spent a good amount of time over the break kind of studying what what problems TLG has, where there's holdups in um, the production and the schedules and, and the line and stuff like that. And one of the holdups is that I'm the, I am the project manager of, of each project. And that's well and good when it's one book. But you take like Gax more, it turned out to be like seven prop pieces, you know, like three books, a map book, isometric maps. You know, it, it turned into a whole bunch of moving parts that I have to kind of get into each one. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at ways of breaking that up, and I think Davis is going to step up, uh, I think, and help me with project managing, which would be really good. Um, get his vision back on things too. He's got a far better artistic vision than I do, much, much better. I just like blocks of text. I love you work for Reaper Miniatures, Mike Disney. Uh, oh, very cool. I didn't know Mike Disney worked for Reaper. Very cool. <sighs> I love Reaper Miniatures. And I got to tell you, I'm going to take a moment to, to a huge shout out to Reaper. They are opening up, beginning, began their own manufacturer of miniatures here in the United States and down there in Texas. That is very cool. Uh, it's, an, it's an avenue that we've looked at uh, recently, not making miniatures, but having our own uh, mole injection equipment. Uh, and doing some some other stuff, but um, yeah, it's very very cool. So hats off to Reaper, very very cool. What's interesting is that a lot of the stuff in the books are easier to access in a VTT like Fantasy Grounds. It will. Uh, that's kind of the thing I think that um, Chuck has been pushing and Tim has been pushing for the better part of a year on me is is the VTT is I don't do it, so I don't I I, I don't you know I can't get my hands on it. Not to say physically, I don't mean that, but I I'm, I don't have the experience with any kind of VTT to know what its utility is. To real, I mean, I understand it intellectually, but to actually see the, the practical application of the VTT and what's going on, it's, it's tough for my brain to make that leap. So I leave it to others to make that leap. <laughs> and Happy New Year, really. Very cool. Uh, we made it to 2021. Uh, what, what is, what's interesting is that a lot of this stuff, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's see, as far as having everything, it's the closest thing to the first, D, first edition AD&D &D DMG I've found. Uh, it's, and that's a huge compliment. Thank you, that David, because that D &D, uh, the DMG from First Ed is a fantastic book. I use that book until it fell apart. Just, it's just filled with information that you can use as a DM, and that's obviously what inspired us to do the CKG. And the idea was anything that came across my screens that questions was has to be addressed in that book. We don't want to put the thing together. Um, and there's, as those of you who DM a lot, GM a lot, or CK a lot, uh, you know there's a lot of questions that come at us. CNC is a great system. Mechanically, it pushes back against the prepackaged, spoon-fed video game problems. It does, too. And the cool thing about that, Willie, really, you know, I'm running a game now. I'm running two games, uh, one for my regular group and then another one for my two nephews and my two sons. And they're younger. They're between the ages of 14 and 20, I think. 
I don't know something. Uh, and they're all video. They are they are video game players like there's no tomorrow, but they love this RPG. Uh, I've come to realize they're not really video game players. They're gamers, and they don't give a crap. They're board game, card games, video games, you know, RPGs. They don't care. They just want it to be fun, uh, and they've learned very very quickly how fun CNC is and how versatile it is. And it's like you said. And they know now, or they're learning now, that when you play a video game, it is pre-packaged. It's, there's only certain things you can do. You can play this character, and this character can do this. That's it. Uh, but in CNC, sky's the limit. The CK is really the limit. Whatever the CK allows you to do, you can do. Uh, it's one of the things we pushed very, very heavy in that section I wrote in the player's handbook, The Tyranny of Rules. Do not let rules t- <laughs> you know, run your game. You just shouldn't. Uh, it's one of those things. Rules are good. They're good. But don't let them run it. I just designed a mini for them. I drew a mini and they loved it and made it. And, and That is very, very cool, man. That is cool, Mike. That's very, very cool. Uh, we've toyed with the managers. Uh, we've talked to Reaper about doing managers for CNC, all kinds of stuff. But we've never actually made that leap. Uh, see, I've started painting minis during the lockdown. Started with Reaper, and they're great. And that's cool, Vic. Man, I can't paint for crap. <laughs> I'm trying. I just can't. Now I need the stats for the for the over for the overboard and CNC. <laughs> CNC demands continued input from both CK and players. It does, and it allows them to play. You know, and push that push that imaginary limit, which is cool. Uh, the email. That just went out saying the AE hardcovers books are on sale for ten bucks. Is that for the print book or just the PDF? The print. Um, so yeah, Amazing Adventures Core Book, Amazing Adventures Companion, and Amazing Adventures Manual of Monsters. Each book is ten bucks print uh, right now up on the site. Uh, so hop over and snag a copy. Uh, there you go. Are you gonna have to the overboard? I'm not. I'm not sure what the overboard is. <laughs> Question, pale ale, pale ale, wheat beer, amber beer, or dark ale? I have to go with dark ale on that. I can tell you this. If I drink wheat beer, it is, I get an almost an immediate headache. So, and I used to love a lot of German beers, and now a lot of them have wheat in them. Um, so, <laughs> someone's rifling around in there. Uh, so, I, I, I quit drinking them. Uh, but Guinness is, is my beer of choice. I absolutely love Guinness. And the overboard is the mini that we presented. Oh, very cool. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we definitely need to stat that up, man. We need to stat that up and get that. You know, interestingly, Art, Art of Mike Disney. So, the Monsters and Treasures of Aired for 5th edition has, I think, 20 new monsters in it. And I've only done about 10 of them. So, maybe we should get your overboard, put it in that. And then it'll make its way in the Castles and Crusades when we redo the M&T of A for C&C. All right, very cool. I don't know if you can put a link up to the illustration. That'd be great. Thank you for the subscription, Lord Gazumba. Very much appreciated. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Lord Gazumba has his own channel. Check it out. Uh, some badass gaming over there. It's a pumpkin beholder. Very cool. <laughs> nice. I like good old American beer. Coors Light. There you go. That's Todd. Is that Todd's favorite? Todd drinks Coors or Bud. I think I can't I think it's Coors. I can't remember. As he sounds like an awesome idea with the overboard. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Uh, I think we... Man, it is pretty hot in here. I don't know what's going on. Hold on, i got to open this window. It's, this, it's that light. I moved my my desk around a little bit. And now that light is beating down on me like Hill's Kitchen or something. I don't know. It's crazy. All right, definitely art of... We'll make it happen. I'm going to... Uh, I'll put a note of it over here. <laughs> Very cool. Need to get into Reaper Miniatures and make a bunch of stats for Castles and Crusades. This is going to be a big CNC year. We're, we're really going to... We're going to get the Player's Handbook out and the CKG out. And then we're going to dive in... Uh, we're just going to dive right into the Planescapes. We're going to wrap up of Gods and Monsters, second printing, uh, and dive right into the Planescapes. I'm super excited about this year. Uh, we also have, of course, Robert E. Howard, uh, the big art book, a Kickstarter coming in March, tentatively. Uh, we'll iron that out as January rolls through. 
Uh, Braided for the real beer experience. There you go. Uh, I had quite a bit. What did I used to drink in? When I'd go see Gary, I can't remember now. It was a local beer. Eh, I can't remember. Wisconsin beer. I don't know if it's a local beer. I don't think it was a... Uh, what do you call those little beer places? <laughs> I can't think of it. Ah, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Cool up with the frosty Dr. Pepper. That's the drink of choice. <laughs> That's always the drink of choice. <laughs> Any day of the week is going to be uh, Dr. Pepper. Any day and evening of the week, <laughs> always Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Microbrewery, yes. New Glarus, New Glarus. Is that how you say that? Glarus, Glarus. That's what I used to drink up there in Wisconsin. It's one of the few things I have Gary Gagax gave me was this beer. He gave me a six pack. I drank five of them. I uh, never got it spotted cows, a good one. Um, and I never did drink this sixth one. And then when he passed away, it just became a memento that you know I've got on my wall. And, uh, <laughs> there you go. Tim's still having trouble watching <laughs> watching the stream. Spotted Cow's a good beer. Uh, I have to tell you though, I've almost completely <laughs> drink, quit drinking beer. <laughs> it's just I don't even know why. Uh, it's just one of those things that I, I drink Dr Pepper and an ass ton of water, and that's about it. Um, Mostly, I think I just work these days. Speaking of water. But, at any rate, New Glarus is an awesome brewery. So is that is that a microbrewery? I honestly can't remember. You know, I would go to Lake Geneva, and there was a, a liquor store two blocks from Gary's house, three blocks from Gary's house. I'd go in, get a bunch of beer and, and Shlepovich stuff that Gary liked, and then we'd go to his house and, and eat, drink, and... and Jibber jabber for hours. So that's I, I don't. I, it wasn't in a microbrewery out of body. Had to switch to Dr. Doc Pepper this year, trying to shed the pandemic twenty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Kadora, I get you. Uh, it's one of those things. I have my eating habits are are atrocious, uh, and it's one of those things I'm trying to fix. Um, and a little bit of exercise would go a long way with me, but I, I get so bored. I'm so bored exercising. I just kind of hope when the zombie apocalypse happens, that way I'll get plenty of exercise and I won't have to, I won't eat too many sugars, you know, because there won't be anything left. It'll, it'll just be running through the woods fighting zombies. But it needs to hurry up because my eyesight's getting worse. <laughs> Thanks for sharing my video link. Fantasy Grounds makes many weekly videos on how to put how to, but they're all folks on deep. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta move Fantasy Grounds in a certain direction. And we're, we're working on all of that. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Tim and Chuck are talking about something about our sex. But we get it all fixed, Chuck. Uh, that's part of what we're doing. Get all this craziness fixed. Uh, so if anyone has any other questions about anything that we're doing here or the industry in general or just questions in general, you know, fire them off. I'll be happy to help them. Uh, ha happy to answer them if I can. We're hoping to get back on a regular schedule. We'll have GM's Tricks of the Trade back up and running on Thursday at 4. And then we've got, I believe... Uh, DM, you're running your game. We got all kinds of stuff going on. Check our schedule out. So, all kinds of stuff. Oh, I'm glad you got it, Grape Ape. I, I, I sent those. I, I sent those. I remember I dropped a huge stack of them in the in the mailbox. In the midst, of like a week or two weeks before Christmas, right about the time I read the articles that the post office was being hammered by all of this stuff, and I was looking at insane pictures you know, of the PO. You can see them if you just go look on the net. I wouldn't start hating when we arrive. <laughs> I mean, it gets crazy. I'm trying to see what would have been your game of the year pick. You know, I don't. That's the funny thing. I play uh, RPGs. I play Castles and Crusades. And if I'm not playing Castles and Crusades, I'm playing Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, which is, I haven't played that in years. Uh, I don't play very many games beyond that. Um, chess a little bit. GTA V, <laughs> which is already eight years old. Yeah, so I, don't, I really don't have very many games that I play beyond the own. CNC really gives... I'm a fantasy gamer, and CNC gives me everything I need. I got two groups that I'm running, and we'll try to get some up here online. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I haven't branched out. I really should branch out. Maybe with that two or three hours I was talking about earlier, I should start gaming a little bit uh, into just different stuff. <laughs> but uh, who knows? <laughs> Yeah, I love that Christmas card this year. The train 
And I thought of one for next year. Now I can't remember what it was. As a helicopter? I think I'm going to do a helicopter next year. I don't think we've done a helicopter yet. We've done a yak cart, uh, a biplane, a dragon, you know, all, a truck. That's my favorite one. The, the pickup truck is my absolute favorite one. And, but uh, we need some, some new type of travel. Uh, any plans for a new cultural, a, a new cultural codex? Uh, he has turned over the, and I don't know the titles, um, the Latinized, the Chinese pantheons and the Korean pantheons. They're in my inbox. I haven't actually dove into them yet. Those will be the next two that we do. And then there's another, and I can't remember what it was. Was it Mesoamerican? I think it's Mesoamerican after that, I believe. I'm not going to swear to that, but... Um, uh, I know he's dove into the next one. So yeah, we've got we've got two more in the works and coming, and those will be later this year. I'm hoping those to be kind of the tail end of our planescapes of gods and monsters and of, of gods and monsters of Aaron and Alf's track that we're going to be working on this year, uh, and then bring these yeah, the, the Chinese and the Korean ones in at, at the end. Those are going to be interesting because they've got so much art. I'm afraid it's going to have to go in there because it's not a pantheon like like the Greek pantheon or or whatever. It's just, you know, it's so many deities, local deities, I guess, that it's, it's going to be a lot of, it's going, to, it's going to be a lot of art. We need to find someone who lives right on the borders of Canada and the U.S. that they can ship all our packages to. They can make a tire to the border and make us swap RPG books for our Canadian friends in Purple Maple Service. <laughs> That'd be great, great ape. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Uh, <laughs> you could just park at the border to throw them across. <laughs> Someone can just go pick them up. Probably get busted for littering. You probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, martial arts rules incoming then. Uh, let me think. Okay, so that that one, we had a book turned over to us some years ago that had a whole bunch of that. It was basically based off of the... Um, not based off of, but kind of covered the same subject matter that was it Oriental Adventures I think that AD&D did uh, some years ago in which we're going to really expand that whole kind of classification of player class uh, well that guy's kind of fallen off the radar I'm not sure what's happened to him uh, so Jason and I have talked some about where that particular project's going to end up um, now it may very well end up in Culturally, in these, in the you know Korean martial arts, Chinese martial arts, arts, this type of thing. I don't know anything about martial arts personally. I mean, I, I took judo when I was in fifth grade or sixth grade or something. That's about it. Um, and I don't know the philosophies of the schools of you know any of that stuff. Um, but uh, we'll definitely look at it. I, I know that one of the disappointments in the Codex Egyptium was that it didn't have classes specific to the Egyptian mythos. Uh, so we, we may readdress that. I'm a little reluctant to have more classes. I don't mind having more abilities, but I, I'm just there's so many classes as it is right now that I, I kind of wanted to tamp that down. But uh, but we'll see where that goes. Uh, when will a Castles and Crusades movie be developed for Netflix? <sighs> Not soon enough. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, you know, we're, we did those two short movies not long ago, uh, the zombie things, uh, the post-apocalyptic things, advertisements, really. Uh, and I'm still in close communication with that director, who's an Emmy Award-winning director, uh, and the actors and actresses. And I, and I, we're, we're talking about we're talking about some more visual aspects to the Castles and Crusades universe. We'll see where that goes. The Rise of Babunski. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Dude, that has to be a book. Absolutely, that has to be. That's got to be an adventure. The Rise of Babunski. <laughs> That's great. Mm, there has to be opportunities in flying drones across international borders. <laughs> it's a brave new world, man. We gotta push it. We gotta push it. But honestly, I don't understand why there's a border between Canada and the United States. I mean, come on. Come on. It's just like, I don't know. I always look at, the, <laughs> I always look at North America as a neighborhood. And there's Mexico. They live on the first floor. The United States, second floor. Canada, the third floor. It's just, we're just neighbors. I don't know. <laughs> there's not more interest in Mexico or I could do the same there you go <laughs> there you go <laughs> I would absolutely love uh, to push you know CNC south of the border I don't know I know there's a decent market for RPGs and by decent I mean it's not gigantic but it's 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 noticeable in Brazil um, 
But I don't know about Mexico. I really don't. It would be interesting to explore that. It would be interesting to see uh, a Spanish version of C and C, but um, I don't speak a word of Spanish at all. Literally, I don't think I can think of a Spanish word, which is kind of sad. Surely I can. How do you say hello in Spanish? Damn it! It's got to be hello. <laughs> hello. I can't remember. Uh, that's just that's that's a sad statement. <laughs> All of my children know that Spanish up and down. Who knows? I took a lot of German. Hola. There you go. Okay, Kadora. There you go. Hola. <laughs> there's. I knew there's some word out there that I had to know. There's probably a few more that I that I know that I that I'm not aware of. But um, I would absolutely love. I would absolutely love to see. Um, Hola, Gringo. There you go. <laughs> I would I would love to see more. Uh, both languages, you know, different languages, CNC done in different languages, but also, you know, into Mexico, Central America, South, all of that stuff. Absolutely love it. Uh, and really, I'm, and I, <laughs> I agree, uh, Epi, it's, it's like the Canadian border. I mean, come on. It's Mexico, it's Canada. Come on. <laughs> why, why anyone is paying more, uh, you know, have something shipped to Mexico City or Quebec City than to Phoenix is just, come on. It's just cross border. Come on. And I remember, you know, when we started this back in 2099, the first shippings we did out was in 2000, once we got up and running. You could ship to either Mexico or um, Canada. It was called International Media Mail, International Parcel Post. It was called International Parcel Post, I believe. And it would only cost... So if we ship, if we ship like three pounds of books to somewhere in the United States and we do it media mail, if it's just a book... You get this special discount. So, and this is, of course, what's on our shipping store. And it's like two bucks or five bucks or whatever it is. It's three or four or five bucks. And now when we started this, that shipping rate was very similar to the international parcel post to Canada and to Mexico. It would be, so if say, say it was five bucks U.S., it would be seven bucks or maybe nine bucks. It wasn't bad. It wasn't atrocious. Somewhere around 05 or 06, I think, I can't really remember when, those shipping prices across the border just they got rid of parcel post uh, and then they, they went to priority only and it, so you went from seven eight bucks to this absolutely ridiculous thirty dollars i mean it's just ridiculous the whole it's <laughs> it's very aggravating now i will say this is very good uh Order to keep you on present your own country. Uh, oh, I don't care about politics. I just mean the shipping. I just, you know, I, I'm all like, borders are fine. I don't care about that. But we're just, it's, you know, we're just neighbors. And, and really, the shipping shouldn't be to ship something from what is it? Where? What's the city next to uh, El Not El Salvador. That's a country. Oh my God. El Paso. What? What Mexic? What city in Mexico is next to El Paso? Is it Juarez? Whatever it is. It's literally. Where is there? You go. It's li- it's literally a quarter of a mile. It's not even that. It's just across the Rio Grande, so it can't cost them that. I get it. When you got to ship something to Australia, I, I get that part. If you got to fly, it's like a thirteen or fourteen hour flight. That's that's not easy. But but to ship something to Juarez, you literally just have to drive a truck across a river. Uh, which if you're shipping on Arkansas, you're driving it across a river anyway. So the, the shipping rates exploding to our neighbors was just. It's just, it was disappointing. It was very, very disappointing. And it hurt sales instantly. I mean, immediately. Uh, because when you're paying more for the book, uh, for the shipping than the book, it's just, it's just ludicrous. Uh, but I don't, I don't see that unraveling anytime soon. I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> High school Spanish classes were 35 years ago. You know, it's funny. I took, I took Latin, I took German, and French. But I never took Spanish, which is just bizarre. Uh, especially being in, in Arkansas. I mean, there's a lot of Spanish speakers in Arkansas. So there you go. Uh, and it's, <laughs> yeah, have you guys thought of making introduction videos to Prime Module Adventures? Uh, I created two on YouTube and a lot of people on Facebook went nuts for them. We, we, we've not talked about doing intro vi- intro, introduction videos to, um, um, to actual adventures, but we've definitely talked about doing it on how to play, you know, what you had mentioned earlier about um, just how to play Castles and Crusades, how to use the Siege Engine. Uh, we've got a GMTT that's kind of geared in that direction. Tim's sitting on it so we can kind of put it together and maybe get a little bit more uh, oomph with it, you know, to make it a little bit a bigger splash and get more people looking on it because uh, 
you know, like you pointed out earlier style it's there's a there's a learning curve to it so yeah and and instructional videos are good uh we, we need to figure out how to do it i'm no good with this type of stuff someone would have to come and help me uh, i'm not good with camera angles and microphones and all that i don't i just read books i don't <laughs> well i watch a lot of tv but i don't know how it's done uh, let's see. It's not a function of distance, but government import taxes. Yeah, that's you're right there. That's it, Ethelson. There's a huge, it's a huge part of it. It's a huge. <laughs> there's a huge ball of tangled mess, uh, and I suspect that uh, I'm not sure what the post office was doing 10 or 15 years ago. I mean, I really don't. I don't. There's nothing I can do about it. As a shipper, I got. <laughs> that's just the way it is. Um, I can't start my own shipping company anytime soon. But uh, I'm not sure why they dropped. I, I know there was a heavy push in the USPS to go to Prime. Uh, Prime. God damn it. Uh, whatever, I can't... <laughs> no, ah, nothing is working for me. I had to go for the, the, the higher end the higher end shipping. They did, they wanted to push people into a priority mail. They wanted to push people into priority mail because it's... My guess is, just a guess, that the boxes are all a certain size so that they can figure out very quickly but based on the number of orders that they have that are all, say it's all medium or pri uh, priority mail, flat rate box, it's all the same size box. They know what kind of shipping containers, weight, rough weight uh, and dimensions that they're gonna have to ship. So I think that there was a push to do that in order to help kind of streamline the whole thing. Uh, that would be my guess. Uh, now, I'm sure it has something to do with rising fuel costs, uh, the availability of you know, trucks and all kinds of, and then whatever, you know, pension plans and all this other stuff that goes into all of these things. Uh, it's, it's, again, it's a huge, gigantic, <laughs> it's a huge, gigantic ball. Uh, but the end of it, the, at the end of whatever their motivations were, it ended up hurting, you know, customers outside of the United States, uh, in Canada and Mexico specifically, because I say, I don't think international priority, our international parcel post, you could go, if you went elsewhere other than Mexico and Canada, it was pretty expensive. Uh, but those two countries, at least, you could ship stuff to. Our Canadian, we, had, we shipped so much stuff to Canada, it was crazy. Uh, and that dropped off almost immediately. I haven't sent any money on RPGs all year. Those AE books need to be added to my collection. <laughs> there you go. I was forced to learn French in school. I hated it. I didn't see the point. I would never live in France or work for a French-speaking company. Of course, then after university, I immediately moved to Belgium and worked for a major company back there. Yeah, you never know where you never know where that road's going to end. <laughs> you just don't know. Uh, it's one of those things that, that it's just a good idea. You know, I tell my kids, I tell anybody that listens, just learn as many skills as you can because you just don't know uh, where that thing you learned eight years ago. Oh, yeah, no, I can do that. You just don't know. And when when it comes to getting a job, you you want to have as much as you can. I see Sylvia. <laughs> Priority, yes. Kadora, I don't know. My brain's just not functioning. <laughs> I have no idea why. Uh, although I, I would say my lack of French and Dutch has hampered potential opportunities. Eh, yeah, you know, a lot of people speak French. That's a hard one. I also learned French in school. I live in an officially French English bilingual country and I'm still a schmuck at French. I <laughs> think I can say my name properly, but that's it. There you go. <laughs> I agree, babe. I, I don't know. Uh, he was off doing some personal stuff. Uh, or he would be here joining us, but I, I, he came back, made a couple of jokes, but, <laughs> but he hasn't made a joke since on Skype, so yeah, I'm not sure if he's with us or not. Yeah, I don't know yet. Uh, it's one of those things. You just never know where the road's going to go. Uh, I, I never would have thought that I would be running a game company at this point. I can get a guarantee, but uh, there you go. All right, well, I think that's it. Uh, we're winding down. Uh, I'm, I'm off... Everybody's schedule. I know that DM was running a game. I'm sure that'll pick up either this week or next week. Uh, I'll be here on Thursday at 4 o'clock for GM's Tricks of the Trade. Please join me there. We'll be talking about wounds, I think. I think we're talking about some bloodletting on the battlefield. One of my absolute favorite things to do. Bashing equipment and chopping up characters. Uh, defraying hit point loss with descriptive text. Uh, is the way I like to put it. But... Um, yeah, join us on Thursday, and uh, I think that's about it. 
Thank you all. Uh, Chuck puts the Lord in troll. <laughs> there you go. Uh, thanks for the stream. Good to get back into the routine. Yes, very much so, Commander P. I just I want to get back to just doing normal what I do normally and, and have it. So we'll, we'll <laughs> this will be a part of that. Uh, and anyway, so I'll be back on on Thursday, and we're going to work really hard to get some of these games up and running. Uh, where I run some games, and you guys can join in or at least come watch on Twitch and uh, and, and heckle us and all of that. So thank you all uh, for joining me today and joining us here at the Troll Lords. Thanks, M5. Thank everybody. Yeah, thanks for the questions and all that. And we will see you on Thursday. All right. Take care, everybody.